So, from uh, one doctor to another doctor, I keep on repeating myself, is uh, Dr. Mano uh, Sistiaga. Give him a big round of applause. <laughs> um, Mano, you are also from the Institute of Marine Research, and you're going to talk about the development of uh, technology and fishing gear. You are from San Sebastian, That's which true. is a fantastic food uh, city and must be not quite the same to end up uh, living in Trondheim compared no, to yes. what you are serving people in San Sebastian. No, it's not exactly the same, no. But I, uh, I grew up watching uh, videos of uh, Jacques Cousteau and uh, I've also been a fisherman since I was a small kid and I was told that uh, the best place to study fisheries is was Norway, so here I am. And the best place to eat is San Sebastian. It's quite okay in Norway as well. It's getting much better. It's getting much better. Yes. Thank you, uh, Mano. The floor is yours. Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the opportunity of, uh, of coming and being able to talk uh, here. I was asked to, uh, to have a small presentation on uh, future perspectives in uh, fishing gear technology. So I'm just going to try to, uh, to explain a bit uh, what the trends or what kind of trends we can uh, expect in the future. I don't think I'm going to say anything very controversial because uh, many of the trends we can expect in fisheries and in the sea, they are the same trends as we see on land, only a bit delayed in certain, uh, in certain aspects. And it is mainly because the sea environment or ocean environment is much more challenging in a way to work with than, than working on land. But the first of all, to understand uh, fishing gear technology and to understand uh, the future perspectives in fishing gear technology, what we need to understand is the diversity of the marine resources. We've got a huge variety of resources at sea uh, that we need to catch or that we want to catch to be able to, uh, to cope with the needs uh, we have. And it is not the same to catch cod as we've got here or to catch other small pelagic species, or to catch plankton, or, uh, or krill, or to catch lobster. So for this, we've got a variety of fishing gear uh, that is very different from each other. Here you can see, for example, a person which is used to catch pelagic fish. You have got also pelagic trolls. You've got bottom trolls, bottom dredges, pots, gillnets. So there's a huge variety of gears to catch all these animals. So it is actually quite complex. It is not the same. There can be people that can say a lot about trolls, but cannot say very much about gillnets or about um, yeah, pots or other kind of types of gears. Yes. So just to say, what do we understand by physics technology? Well, well it includes basically all tools needed to discriminate and with discriminate, we mean capture or not capture fish and other animals in the world. And the reason I put a small uh, star here in animals is because uh, now, for example, we have started using trolls to capture plastics as well, which are a small uh, or which are a large problem at sea. Um, and that also um, concern fisheries technology. We're trying to improve technologies to be able to catch uh, microplastics and plastics and so on. But back to the animals and back to uh, fish. Uh, you can see here, just so that you understand the, the kind of diversity we, we talk about when we talk about fishing gear technology, we've got some sorting grids here, we've got some troll doors, spare fishing, hooks, this is some image from the flume tank in uh, Hirchals, pots, and so on and so forth. Okay? As Carl was uh, into earlier, and also Maria mentioned, uh, to also understand what the future perspectives will be in fishing gear technology, we need to understand what the status is in the world fisheries. Uh, as we all know, the, the sea fisheries, or the production from the sea fisheries, has more or less, it's more or less stagnant. And uh, the increase we see here, that Carl was talking about earlier, is mainly due to aquaculture. Uh, we've got the objectives of the United Nations of Zero Hunger, and this is only 
expected to increase because we are more and more and more, the world is more and more populated, and we can only expect these needs to increase. So what are we going to do when we need to find new resources? Yes, okay. Uh, there was, for example, just to take an example of mesopelagic fish, which I believe we'll hear a bit more about uh, later today. Uh, this was a mapping that was done in, uh, or published in 2014 that was showing that uh, where there were quite some resources of mesopelagic fish that we could catch. But one thing is to have the resource, and another thing is to be able to catch it. So yes, there, there is potential of uh, mesopelagic fish, but so far, fishermen are not being able to exploit the resource, mainly, for example, because it's quite widespread, and it is not easy to catch resources that are widespread. Okay? Because, for example, if you're going to use a troll, you need to use a large troll, then you increase the drag, and so on and so forth. So it is because the resource is there, it doesn't mean that we are able to catch it. When it comes to the technological advances we have had, in fisheries in the last 50, 60 years. If we see away from the last 10, 15 years where we've got uh, these uh, advances uh, linked to the technological area, we could say that in, in modern fishes there's been three major findings or three major breakthroughs. One was the triplex, which, which uh, allowed the, um, the vessels fishing with a person, for example, to avoid having very high blocks and gave a lot of stability to the vessels and facilitated the processes of catching fish a lot. When it comes to long lines, for example, we have had these auto line systems, which allows an auto line vessel today to deploy around 60, 70,000 hooks a day and also bait them automatically, something that was done by hand for 30, 40 years ago. And of course, we've got the stern trawlers, which have come from simple trawlers, that were simple trawlers that were used in, yeah, in uh, the 50s and 60s to being able to use double and triple and quadruple trawls uh, today. Yes, when it comes to, uh, to, uh, to the modern demands, what kind of modern demands we can expect uh, or do we have? Well, if we look at the pictures above, we can expect that we're going to have more demands regarding environment. Uh, the environmental demands are only going to increase. This on the upper left hand side, you can see the track of a troll door, for example, and, a, and an area that is quite, uh, yeah, has got some desertization. Here you can see an area or a catch of an area that is typically overfished. And here you can see some issues with ghost fishing, with uh, gillnets that are lost and that continue fishing over the time. And of course we've got the problems of plastics that need to be solved. So we can expect demands in fishing gear technology, these demands to solve these issues, they are only going to increase in the future. Other demands that are going to increase, they are the demands for quality, for fish quality, for welfare and for sustainability. And here I want to use an example of uh, the bluefin tuna fishery which is a fishery that, is, uh, that we work quite a lot uh, with at the moment. Here you can see a picture of 1926 in Trondheim, where the fish was landed. You see how it was landed, and then uh, it was probably taken with trains or other sources of transport to Italy or Spain or other places to Cannes. Here you can see the demands of today, where you've got very, very thorough uh, following of the quality of the fish. Here on the upper part, you can see how the fish is harvested today in Norway, where the fish is, or the, the net is dried out. And here below, you can see how they shoot the fish in the farms in the Mediterranean. The difference in here is that uh, here the fish gets very, very stressed, and the quality of meat is not very good. Here you can see that the fish is swimming quite calm. It gets one shot in the head, and it's dead. So you can expect that the quality of the fish you get like that is much, much higher. That's something that is probably going to come to us, and it's part of the development we can uh, expect. We can expect that uh, the welfare of animals is going to be set higher and higher, and the demands for quality are also going to increase. Another uh, demand we, we are supposed to expect, or we will, uh, we will have, or we have already, is the demand for increasing efficiency and reduced costs. The efficiency of everything needs to increase. It's the same in land. We are all the time looking for more efficient processes, and we are all the time looking for reduction of costs. 
Here you can see the development of the number of fishing vessels in Norway since the 70s until today. And you can see the development. There is approximately like one-sixth of the vessels, and the vessels have the capacity to catch much, much more than what they did in the 70s. This leads to, for example, our vessels that fish their quotas in five, six months, and the rest of the year they just need to be on land. So this is how the efficiency has increased, and this efficiency, this demand for efficiency is only going to increase. Um, this demand in efficiency as well, it's going to probably bring a demand or a necessity to combine different uh, gears, uh, and also a necessity to increase the efficiency in the factories of the vessels, okay, including sensors and so on, just make process more efficient. And the same is going to happen with science and with the trials. We are very often at sea carrying sea trials, and the demand for the efficiency in these sea trials is larger and larger. Okay, we get less and less time to work at sea because it is very expensive, and uh, we are more and more, um, uh, how would you say it? Um, we work more and more towards automatized processes uh, to collect data. Okay. If we look at the demands, or if we keep in mind the demands we have seen earlier, what kind of, uh, of perspectives, what, what can we expect for fisheries? Well, I showed you earlier this, uh, the, the demands for quality and the demands for animal welfare in, uh, in the bluefin tuna fishery. Here you can see. This is a project that we have had again for four years. Last year, we got to cage tuna here in Norway and just bring it to land. Okay, so we were able to catch it wild and bring it and keep it in, uh, in, um, in cages uh, by the coast. This is something that is done in the Mediterranean, but it's never been done in Norway before. And this is a process that is only going to continue in the future because, again, it increases the quality of the fish. Uh, produces better quality, and so on and so forth. This is the development of a semicircular spreading gear, which is a gear used in, in boat controls. And one of the greatest advantages of this gear is that it delivers a much, or it has a much lower bottom impact than the traditional row coppers. Uh, the same as the troll dose that has been lifted from the, from the seabed, or most of vessels used, uh, use, um, just the doors that are lifted from the seabed. And we can also, for example, uh, um, expect to use or to see increase of use of gear like pelagic trolls, for example, that have less, less bottom impact. Here you can also see a picture also of biodegradable plastics and also a picture of a vessel that can combine several activities, not only fishing activities, but also activities related to aquaculture, offshore industry, and so on and so forth. We are also, or we will, or we should expect also um, the improvement or progress towards the use of, uh, or improvement of optical or acoustic technologies. Uh, it is very important to, hide, to have eyes under the sea, to be able to see what is happening in the fishing gear. And we're only, we're only going to expect in an increase in uh, technologies, in uh, acoustic technologies as this, or visual technologies that can automatically detect species and so on. Uh, what it is not easy, and this is a very ideal picture of, uh, of, uh, of how fish enters a troll, while here in the, in the lower picture here, what you can see is um, a crowd of fish where it is not that easy to again look and identify the fish one by one. And the last, uh, the last, um, how would you say, great, uh, I would say, uh, perspective of what we can expect, again, from um, in fisheries technology is the increase of the use of autonomous, uh, autonomous vehicles, okay, this Armada strategy that we call. This, for example, was a vehicle that was uh, deployed for two weeks ago in Bergen and is going to be looking with an echo sounder to the distribution of Sprat in the fjords in the south. So I believe that those are the main blocks or the main, uh, the main advances we can expect in fishing, uh, in fishing gear technology. But all this technology and all the best, this development is very fine. But we also need human resources to understand and interpret all this 
data that we are getting from these autonomous vehicles and from all this, um, from all this, uh, yeah, for, to get all this digital information we're getting and this automatized information. We also need humans to communicate and we also need humans for decision making. So I just hope that this development continues, but I also hope that it doesn't take completely over the field because we need fishing gear technologies and there's a huge problem to recruit. So that was mostly what I have to say. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the exhibition.